the service this morning. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, it was great to have you in the house. It's great to be seated right next to you. Hey, let me check if your neighbor is smiling. Amen. Tell them in church we smile. Amen. Uh, the Lord has spoken a word. He said this year we will end it smiling and rejoicing. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. Grace will take us into the fullness of all that God has prepared for us as we come to the end of 2015. Glory to God. The Bible says better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. Hallelujah. How many people have their faith out that as we come to the end of this year, we will see a greater glow than we saw at the end of 20, 2014? Let me see your hand this morning. Hallelujah. A greater glory. A greater manifestation of grace. A greater manifestation of light. Greater results. Hallelujah. A greater positioning to step into 2016. Hallelujah. Father, we just give you praise. Come on, just wave your hands and just thank the Lord. We thank you because you are faithful to your word. You do not change. You will perform a good work in us as we come to the end of this year. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How has the fasting been? Great. Awesome. Hallelujah. Come on, turn to neighbor and say, we've only just started. How many more days to go? Fifteen. Amen. If we don't count today, fifteen more days to go. Hallelujah. It can only get better. Amen. It can only get better. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise. So this morning, I'm not preaching. God has prepared a servant to declare God's word to us this morning. Hallelujah. Uh, Tuesday, the 1st of December, was Pastor Raya Jewish last birthday. And this morning, he's going to be declaring God's word to us. Hallelujah. You know, uh, his older brother is my covenant friend. And through his older brother, I've met the whole family. And many, many years ago, when Pastor Raya was the senior pastor of one of the campus churches in the universities for King's Word uh, Ministries International, I was the president of the campus ministry at the time, and we worked together, hallelujah. Did many great works for the Lord in the, uh, in the nations or in the cities around the western part of Nigeria in those years. And ever since then, his consistency has been infallible, hallelujah. God has used him in different places, in the city churches, in the campus churches, to be a blessing. Hallelujah. And this morning is going to be a blessing to us. As, a, as an assistant pastor, he is a strong man. Hallelujah. And I trust my pastors, I trust my ministers, you know, to, to support me in the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. You know, we do a lot of things outside of church. There's a lot of work that we have to do outside of church. I'm very grateful that I have people like him to support me in doing this work. Hallelujah. So this morning, I believe that God has prepared us a word that will change your life forever. Obviously, you know, I was just thinking about it that, you know, Pastor Raya is able to do all these things because of Minister Nike, but I don't see Minister Nike at the moment. Glory to God. She's somewhere in the house. Hallelujah. So we thank God for Minister Nike as well. Please, can we put our hands together for Minister Nike wherever she is in the house. Hallelujah. Because she allows... Uh, the grace of God on Pastor Raya to find expression. Amen. Glory to God. So are you ready for God's word this morning? I'm sure you're going to be blessed. So with Holy Ghost joy, please can we receive this morning the ministry of Pastor Raya, Jewish Elias, who brings us God's word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Father, we give you thanks. Why don't you just lift up our hands and just thank God. God has a plan for you. The Bible says, The thoughts that I think towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope and God has not changed his mind yet Father we thank you for your plans for us oh glory Father we thank you for your plans the good plans, the great plans that you have in store for us Lord we ask that you do what you want to do here today say what you want to say Lord, 
so that the faith of your people will not rest in the wisdom of men but in your power change lives heal the sick father bring alignment to the person who needs it bring direction to the one who needs it father we say no to every form of confusion we say no to every form of destruction in the name of jesus we speak clarity to the lives of people clarity of vision clarity of assignment clarity of your call on the lives of your people in the name of jesus ah father let there be a supply of your spirit in jesus name amen praise god hallelujah glory thank you for answering me hallelujah praise god how many of you are expecting this morning i'm expectant glory to god uh, glory i'm expectant for what god wants to do hallelujah i'm expectant for for who god god wants to change I'm expecting for the life that God wants to change here this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. So briefly, I'm going to be um, teaching on what I titled the concept of work. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to write it down. The concept of work. God's view. The concept of work. God's view. If you ask a lot of believers, when you hear the word work, what comes to your mind? <clears throat> I'll read something I wrote down here. In the body of Christ, we, have seen, we seem to have fallen for the deception of a religious perception to work. When most people hear the word work in church, we unconsciously and subconsciously go into two divides work within the four walls of the church and work within the secular world the nine to five the subconscious mindset is that the secular nine to five is what you do during the week hallelujah when when we hear the word work what comes naturally to, to the minds of, of believers or most believers is me joining the choir me, me singing in the choir joining the ushering um being in charge of the library the projector team playing the keyboard but immediately we leave church if you mention work again to, to the same set of people what comes to their mind from monday morning is nine to five hallelujah C could you could you carry on oh, it, it, what comes to mind is nine to five hallelujah and the subconscious mindset is that the secular nine to five job or work is what you do during the week and it is from this that we are taking care of that it pays our bills and puts food on our table church work on the other hand for most for most of us the way we see it is to satisfy a spiritual feeling that after doing the nine to five on monday to friday or monday to saturday for, for for some of us that it will be good if i come over to do something spiritual within the four walls of the church these two divides even determines the job titles like i said if i say oh come let me give you work to do the next thing that comes to your mind maybe you're tracking me to a department in church and say i want you to do this in um, hospitality i want you to do this in ushering but when you leave the four walls of a church and i say let me give you work to do you probably start thinking of project management you start thinking of uh maybe you want to give me work uh, in in the law firm in an accounting firm all of a sudden the mindset changes but this morning i want us to see work from god's perspective i want us to see when, when, when god mentions when god says walk what, what what exactly is on his mind and the reason why i want you to follow me closely the reason why we need to get this is because it's going to change our paradigm 
it's going to change the way we think and it's going to affect every aspect of our life and it's going to affect everything that we do hallelujah it's going to affect our approach it's going to affect our attitude anytime we hear the word work let's open our bible to ephesians 2 10 let's start from there that that's basically the main the main scripture but the other ones ephesians 2 10 Ephesians 2 10 says, For we are God's handiwork. Now, I want you to be sincere with me, okay? For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance <clears throat> for us to do. Now, in sincerity, every time you've read or heard this scripture, when you hear the word good works, what comes to mind? As I'm, I'm giving the opportunity to, to talk. When you hear good works, what comes to mind? Hmm? So what did you say? Helping other people, okay? What did you say, Stasho? The things you do in church, okay? Giving to, giving to people, okay? Can you see that? From, from what, what we seem to have said and probably what some people have not said we seem to have streamlined that word good works to mean something that is done either something that is done in church or something that you do outside but has a spiritual connotation to it okay now we're going to do something let's read um, okay that's the NIV version it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now let's let's read the amplified version. It says, For we are his workmanship, his own masterwork, a work of art, created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritually transformed, renewed, ready to be used for good works which God prepared for us beforehand, taking parts which is set, so that we would walk in them, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. Let's, let's go to um, the easy to read version. Were you able to get that? Okay. Easy to read version. I'm, I'm going to allow scriptures talk to, to us first, just by reading it. Now, easy to read version. Say, God has made us what we are. In Christ Jesus, God made us new people so that we would spend our lives doing the good things he has already planned for us to do. Okay? Let's go to um, Common English Version, CEV, if you have that. Okay? It says, God planned for us to do good things and to live as he has always wanted us to live. That's why he sent Christ to make us what we are. I want us to read the uh, God's Word version. Um, GW. It says, God has made us what we are. He has created us in Christ Jesus to live lives filled with good works that he has prepared us to do. Let's read the Good News translation. Okay. God has made us what we are and in our union with Christ Jesus he has created us for a life of good deeds which he has already prepared for us to do. Now, reading that, 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 that it, to an extent it's, it's telling us that the, the, the definition or our perception to good works that we've said is a part truth it's partly true but it's not it doesn't encompass the whole thing now if we go to 
um, now I'm, I'm just I'm not going to do that much, but let me just um, take us to the Greek translation. Okay, I hope we're fine. Amen. Uh, praise God. Don't mind me. This is how I this is how I study, and this is how I I, I teach. Ephesians two two ten. Okay, now Ephesians two ten. The word good. Look at what. Listen to what it means. It means of good constitution. It says a lot of things. It now says it means of benefit. Something that is beneficial. So okay. So that means we can say a life as in um, created unto beneficial works, right? But now let's go to that word works or work. It's from a Greek word which means egon. Okay. Thank you. You know, the, the first time I saw this, you know, there's a difference between when you're doing a study and it's um, and it's as a result of you putting different scriptures together. That's how you were able to arrive at something. But and when you are doing a study and you look at the greek and the exact word as in the, the greek tells you a particular word that you don't need to go and start putting a lot of scriptures together now look at the exact um, word that the greek says work it says it means business employment that which one is occupied with that means it means occupation Let's continue. He said, that which one undertakes to do. Another word here is enterprise. Any product, whatever, anything accomplished by hand, art, A-R-T, industry, or mind. An act, deed, thing done. The idea of working is emphasized to that which is Okay, good. But now says, um, as an effort or an occupation. Now let's put that back in the. Let's go back to the new KJV and let's apply what we just read. Work. We, we got the word business, occupation, um, employment, and enterprise. Now look at it. Say, for we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good beneficial now that, that word beneficial eh, it leads me to another greek word that that the word he uses intrinsic that is inborn so apply it created in christ jesus unto good beneficial intrinsic inborn business occupation employment and enterprise all of a sudden the scripture begins to open to us that when you you see the word walk what god has on his mind is bigger than what we have had on our minds jesus made a statement his parents were looking for him they, they, they thought he was lost and when he said but why 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 have you put us through this he said why are you looking for me for based on the definition we have for most of us will have said why are you looking for me don't you know i must be about my father's work but he said don't you know i must be about my father's business he called what his father asked him to do he called the work he called it business he called it enterprise he called it occupation as in i have some translations here it says for we are god's making we are god's underwork we created in christ jesus for good beneficial intrinsic business enterprise employment that we should that which god had prepared beforehand now listen to this last part 
that we should spend the rest of our lives doing which God had beforehand planned that we should I'm not going to say that we should spend the rest of our lives living for all of a sudden you will understand when Jesus said when he was talking to the woman at the well Jesus was hungry and his disciples went into town to get food before they came back they saw him talking to this this samaritan this um samaritan woman and when she left they said okay have food to eat jesus said something he said uh you know what let, let, let's read it john 4. from verse 32 he said i have food to eat of which you do not know now what does the food do to, to, to the human body it, it keeps you going it keeps you alive right it gives you energy but jesus said that i have food they gave him food but he said no i have food to eat that you do not know then in verse 34 he said my food is to do the will of him that sent me basically what he was saying was this he said what keeps me alive is the work the business the enterprise that my father has committed into my hand and that is what i'm going to spend the rest of my life doing now to, to make it easier for us let, let's let's leave um the five food ministry notice the word we use as in that we that we found out earlier he said intrinsic that is inborn that means inside of everybody here inside of everybody on the face of this planet is the work the business the enterprise that god had planned that you should spend the rest of your life on earth doing that means even even if that means there's there's no reason for unemployment because if every one of us were to uh, or are to look inside of us to find out what god had planned that we should spend the rest of our lives doing then we would find work that we are meant to be doing the bible talks about jeremiah he said before you were formed in your mother's womb i knew you he said i ordained you as a prophet to the nation that means jeremiah was not coming to the earth thinking what am i going to do while i'm on the earth he did not come to the earth thinking you know what what is selling right now is project management so let me let me let me let me go and do some project management courses then by the time you 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 are about finishing you find out that it's no longer project management it's now business analysis no what he was sent here to do god put it inside of him before he left the presence of god and the same thing is true with us before you left before you were formed in your mother's womb there, there, there's someone uh, you've been you've been you you've been frustrated you've asked yourself over and over again i keep applying i keep applying god i'm tired i've made hundreds of possible thousands of applications and I keep in the same thing I have this qualification I have that qualification I have this but God is saying to you glory God is saying why don't you look within why don't you look inside of you and begin to live you know what it is 
I actually, uh, as in there are two people, I actually know who they are, but you know God has revealed to you what that work is. But you are having challenges, you're, you're, you're having a challenge embracing that work. Why? Because you would prefer to do something else. God is saying, embrace the work that I have revealed to you and spend the rest of your life doing it. What you have, you have fears and you are asking questions. But God, how are my needs going to be met? How am I going to take care of my family? I've got bills to pay. I've even got debts to pay. God, as in, how am I going to do it? But God is saying, trust me. What I've revealed to you, you start doing it. And the grace that backs up what I've called you to do will sort out the challenges that you think you're having. Cast your care. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The world keeps talking about unemployment, unemployment, unemployment. But really, is there, should there be unemployment? You know what, when, when, when God was telling me this is what I wanted to talk about, a part of me felt like it looks so easy and straightforward. And God said, no, that's what I wanted to talk about. Give attention to your business. I'll, I'll say it in a way that will strike us. Mind your business. Mind your business. Let your business, your enterprise, consume your mind. Stop trying to be someone else. Stop trying to live another life. A part of us have this, you know, as in, there was a time when um, this heresy was going on that God is, God is, God is not involved in who you marry. It's, you shine your eyes, you, as in, you are the one that choose. That you make the choice yourself. That at least it was Adam, Adam saw the woman and all that. And people started propagating this thing of, um, you have to be the one to choose. And when God was teaching me, he said, people have done the same thing with work. They're like, no, no, work. I, I, I determine the work I do. I determine what I want to do. It's my life. Really, you know what? If you really look at it from God's view, it's not, it's not really your life. If you look at Adam, I like something Jesus said. Jesus said, when he was talking to the Pharisees, when they were asking questions about adultery, he said, in the beginning, it was not so. And the same thing, where work is concerned, in the beginning was not so. Now, open the Bible to Genesis chapter 2, verse 8. It says, The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, the tree of life and all that. Verse 10. Now a river went out, uh, no, I want verse 15. It says, Then the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden to tend and to keep it. God was concerned. God gave Adam the work he wanted him to do. It was not Adam that decided, that looked around and said, You know what? I think I, I, will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will tend, I will tend the ground God was involved in it and our lives are no exceptions your life is not an exception enough of uh, man trying to figure out with his mind what he thinks he can do what he thinks he should do why don't we take some time to find out, God, 
you sent me to this earth when we stand before God as, in, as believers God is going to ask us one question I sent you to the earth on an assignment how far even if you never studied accounting that day you will practice accounting I sent you today I, I, I packaged gifts for you inside of you how far I sent you to the earth to do something specific I put gifts inside of you I put things in, inside of you to help you do that thing for some of you it's as in it's is writing but you're thinking how can I make how can I make it out of writing as a, a, a part of me is feeling as if as if I'm I, I, and it happens to me a lot I feel as if I'm walking around people's lives and I'm seeing it as, as what I'm seeing right now is as if I'm not seeing you but I'm seeing you it, it, it appears that it doesn't make sense it's as if I'm, as if I'm looking at x-ray after God made the heaven and the earth the Bible said and God rested from all the work he had done there's work that needs to be done you I, I might not know what your work is but there's work there's business there's enterprise that God has placed inside of you stop running away from it there's a grace look at what Paul told Timothy there's a grace that has been sent to back it up young, young, young people young, you, um, you church don't think well it doesn't apply to me yet i'm still i'm still in college i'm still in high school i'm still as in uh, no no no. god did not put that work inside of you when you leave high school he put that he put it inside of you he said before you were formed in your mother's womb and before your parents even thought about it so you can actually start right now praying out and finding out what that work is Timothy became a pastor of a church at is it 16 very young age look at what Paul told Timothy first Peter 1 first Peter 4 14 he says do not neglect the gift that is in you see I, I, I'm standing here today and I'm saying the same thing to us one thing has always been my prayer no no don't get me wrong I've, I've it's not like i've always eat it but one thing has always been my heart cry and that is colossians 1 father i pray that i will be filled with the knowledge of your will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding why that i may walk worthy of you fully pleasing you he said do not neglect the gift that is in you which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of hands he said meditate on these things give yourself entirely to it give yourself entirely to it let what god has put inside of you see what there's something staying inside of you now don't kill it let it flow there's an anointing on the house that helps people find the 
their gift and their calling don't go against the tide go with the tide go with go with your go with the grace on the house go with the grace on the house don't neglect don't don't neglect what god has put inside of you don't neglect your work don't neglect your business don't neglect your enterprise give yourself only to it give yourself only completely to it so that your profit so that your profit Let's rise up on our feet. So that your profit. See, God is not a wicked God. He said, when Jesus was leaving the earth, he said, I will not leave you as orphans. He is a father. He said, so that your profit, the, 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 the concerns that you have. See, God is saying, let me undo your concerns. You are not, you can't take care of yourself more than I can take care of you. God is saying, you focus on that work. Focus, give yourself entirely to it. Paul says on me, I do not run like in, ah, I do not run like someone and perhaps like as if I don't have a, a, an aim but say whatever I need to do to eat that thing that God has put inside of me to do I will do it he said I put under my body ah if my body is what is preventing me from doing that work he said, I will beat my body black and blue. Jesus, see, Jesus, this, this assignment God has put, God's given you. You cannot allow, afford to allow anything, stop it from finding expression. Jesus was physically hungry. But when they brought him food, he said, ah, there's a food that I, that I eat that you don't know about. He said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. Peter was hungry. For some of us, we we'll probably stay in that kitchen and we'll, ah, I'm going to look at this food until it's done. Thank God for this period of fasting. So Peter was hungry, but he went to the rooftop to pray. His body was presenting a distraction to, to him. But he went to pray and that baffled the ministry the gospel to the gentile world what if peter had allowed that distraction and said ah we'll pray later what if for you you, you know what the distraction can be for you it might not be it might not be your flesh it might be tv it might be sports it might be whatever i'm not here to point out what it is you know what it is there's a grace on the house at the moment to help you deal with whatever distraction whatever weight whatever will not allow you to say yes to that work to say yes to that business to say yes to that assignment it does not have to be a five-foot ministry no it could be in the business world it could be in the education world it could be in the entertainment world it could be in in in, in, uh, in the film industry whatever it could be in the music world whatever it is there is a grace on the house at the moment to search you out there's a grace on the house at the moment to empower you to remove whatever burden, destroy whatever yoke, and make it easy, and, and empower you to live that life 
that God has determined that you should spend the rest of your life living. If you are here this morning and you are thinking, God, help me. I know what you have called. I know the work. But God, there's this issue. There's this bill. There's this weight. How do I commit myself to this work and still deal and still do the work you have called me to do? There's some of you are, you are thinking, I, I don't even know what the work is. There are some of you, you know what the work is, but it's as if you feel your sensing is out of you. It's time for what is. Bible says, if you are faithful in another man's business, that which is your own will be committed into your hand. You are this face of your life, and you're thinking, and you know that ah, God, God is about to commit that which is my own into my hand. But I've been trying to lay hands on it, but it seems to be eluding me. If you fall into any of these categories. I want you to come out. I want you to come out. There's an anointing on the house to align people, to, 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 to get people back on, on track, to help people redeem the time, to help to, to get people back on the line that God had before and before the foundation of the earth. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But yet not I. But the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who died for me. Paul was saying, the life I live, I'm no longer myself. I don't have my life any longer. My life right now is the life that God planned for me to live. Ah, kashakaramadu, the grace for alignment the grace for discovery the grace to stand where God had beforehand planned for us to stand the grace that God had before the foundation of the world ordained for you to stand. Paul said, Stop the gift of God that is in you. I speak to you right now. I speak to that work, that business, that enterprise, that occupation. I said, Stop. I said, Find expression. I said no to any destruction. I said find expression in the name of Jesus. That assignment, that operation, that gift, I stand up. I stand up. I said find.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, we can put your hands together for our amen. Praise God. Uh, God has released Sister Shell from that role. Sister Shell is going to be taking some time to pray every Sunday, 9 a.m. in the activity in the performing studio over there. She's going to be praying. I don't know if you were here two Sundays ago when I prayed for her and released her. Hallelujah. So if you want to spend some time praying, amen, praying for the church, praying, 9 a.m. in the performance studio, she's going to be there. You can join her in a time of prayer. Hallelujah. But this is going to be stepping into that role, and she's stepping into this assignment. Wow, the power of God is so strong in this place. Hallelujah. Can you just stretch out your hands towards her as she steps into this work that God is calling her to? Glory to God. The grace that you need, give anything. This is a season of grace. I declare that you step into the fullness of grace where this world is concerned. Everything that God has called you to do, every work that God wants to perform in your life as a result of this world, I declare you walk into it. You are enveloped by this grace. I declare that this grace will draw men to you. I declare that this grace will transform your life. It will not just be your life in church that people will see has changed. All that concerns you will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for this grace. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The Bible says that the spirit of wisdom came upon Joshua because hands were laid on him. Everything that is required for you to fulfill this assignment is released now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Pastor Spirit, can you come forward? Glory to God. Father, we thank you for every one of these elements. We, we thank you for the bread and we thank you for the wine. We declare in the name of Jesus that they are sanctified as the body and as the blood of Jesus. We declare that good grace is released to every life and every destiny here today. We declare in the name of Jesus where the fulfillment of God's plans and purposes for our lives are concerned that we step into the fullness of all that God has created us to be. We declare every limitation is removed. We declare every hindrance is removed. We declare breakthroughs where people are having difficulties, where there is opposition. We declare breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. Where there is limitation, we declare breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Come on, can you lift up your hands this morning? We declare breakthroughs in the name of Jesus. As we come to the end of 2015, we declare as we partake of the body and the blood of Jesus, we do proclaim his death every withstanding situation. We declare that turn around right now in the name of Jesus. We speak to problems that are long standing. We declare by reason of the body and the blood this morning that those situations are coming to an end in the name of Jesus. We declare freedom from every trap that people may be in, every trap, every cycle keeping them out of God's assignment for their lives, every attitude keeping them from stepping into what God has made available for them. We declare by reason of the body and the blood this morning that they are free from those traps. They are free from those cycles, those demonic cycles. They are free to step into all that God has made available for them in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise for this. In Jesus' name. Pastor, please, can you take this for me? Hallelujah. Is you, all I need is you. Please, what you take to just hold it and declare God's word over your life. Just receive it and declare God's word over your life. Feel like that's the thing. We declare that every member of the King's Holy National Church is released into the fullness of God. Released into the fullness of God. 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 Oh, 
hands when you ask so they can come to you. All right, the people of this section need bread. Hallelujah. Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. Father, we do not forget every sacrifice that Jesus made walking this earth, dying on the cross, going to hell on our behalf, <laughs> and then being raised from the dead and ascending on high, leading captivity captive. We do not forget that Jesus is at the right hand of God as an intercessor, as an advocate, standing in the gap on our behalf so that we can continue to experience the grace of God in His fullness. So that it is not because of what we have done, but because of what He has done that we are accepted in the beloved. Hallelujah. That is because of what He has done that we are free. That we have access to all things. If you don't have it, please can you lift up your hands? Anybody yet to receive the communion elements this morning? Hear that dance the same as you This is the reason why we will never be defeated another day in our lives. The Bible says, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. This is the reason why we will end 2015 victoriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Every wall of darkness is destroyed. Father, we thank you that as we partake of your body and your blood, we make alive again every aspect of our life that may be dying. We speak life to every aspect of our life that may be failing. We declare in the name of Jesus that your word upholds all things in every aspect of our lives. We declare that our lives are a true reflection of the grace of God. Our lives are a true reflection of the wisdom of God. Our lives are a true reflection of the power of God. Hallelujah. Come and partake of the body and the blood now in the name of Jesus. We give you praise. 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 Come on, you take it. We just give you praise this morning. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. 2015 is going to be our best year ever. We are not going to say that there was a year that was better than 2015 for us. 2015 is going to be the best year we have ever had. If you cannot say that already, oh, the Lord has plenty of time to make good His word. Hallelujah. A year full of uncommon testimonies. A year full of unusual miracles. A year full of goodness. Hallelujah. The fullness of His grace. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Thank you for the appointment of your spirit. Thank you for the appointment of your spirit. Thank you for healings. Thank you for miracles. Thank you for signs. Thank you for wonders. Perform in us. Perform through us. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Mm. For better is the end of the thing than the beginning thereof. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we give you praise. Oh, glory to God. You can have your seat this morning. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Are you blessed? Amen. By Pastor Ryan's administration this morning. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Uh, in 2016, I believe God, God will be sending this great man of God out. Hallelujah. To do more works for him. Can I get an amen? amen. Hallelujah. We we'll give God all the glory. Amen. It's such a blessing to have uh, strong men supporting you in the work of the ministry. Amen. You cannot undermine uh, 
the importance of having such people supporting you, backing you up. It's a privilege, hallelujah, to have my pastors, to have my ministers supporting me. is a great privilege. And this morning, we're going to take some time to just celebrate Pastor Raya. Hallelujah. Uh, it's a great mystery. I don't remember being in the church where the pastors' birthdays were so close to each other. Hallelujah. Amen. But God must be saying something. Hallelujah. Uh, back to back. Amen. All right, Mason, to see you can come forward now. Amen. All right, can we bring the cake forward? Hallelujah. And just send it to the right of the communion table. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Pastor Raya, we love you. Um, as they bring the cake, can we sing happy birthday? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday, Pastor Raya. We say we love ya. Birthday, happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pastor Raya. The great man of God. So much i love you so much we're going to call in some thank you we get some people that have said they have to say something about pastor Raya. and unfortunately i don't have a slot in that so i'm going to say mine before i have the microphone so i'm going to say mine before anyone else comes up pastor Raya, you're such an awesome person i remember once in um a small group you can have your seat a small group we have to say something about each other and almost everybody said the same thing as about Pastor Raya. Pastor Raya gives everybody a very long rope. Sometimes I go to Pastor Raya, Pastor Raya, I'm so this person has done this. And he's like, oh, you know what? There's probably a reason. I'm, there, there's no reason. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for heeding the call of God. Thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. Hallelujah. Okay, very quickly, we're going to call in some people that are going to say something about this wonderful man of God. Um, first of all, to talk for two minutes, can you give a round of applause for Taiwo? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, when Minister Tito told me I was going to say something about Pastor, I said, God, what am I going to say? And um, I'm probably not going to take two minutes. I timed this actually. It was about three minutes and 47 seconds. So, um, yeah. And I was thinking, God, what am I going to say? And God just um, laid the song on my heart. I'm not going to sing the whole song, but I'm just going to say the words of the song that I think really connect with Pastor Ayer's ministry. And then I'll probably sing the chorus. Um, God willing. So the song, um, the words say, the words say, I dreamed and went to heaven and you were there with me. 
We walked upon the streets of gold. One by one they came, far as the eye could see, each life somehow touched by your generosity. Little things that you have done, sacrifices made, or noticed on earth, in heaven now proclaimed. And I know up in heaven you're not supposed to cry, but I'm almost sure there were tears in your eyes as Jesus took your hand and you stood before the Lord and he said, Child, look around you. Great is your reward. I just want to say thank you for giving to the Lord. I am definitely a life that has been changed and I thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm so glad that you gave. Can I sing chorus? Thank you for giving to the Lord. I am a life that was changed. I thank Forgiving to the Lord passed away. I am so glad you gave. Thank you, Tyro. Thank you, Tyro. That's why a lot of people love you in this place today. Some people were tapping, why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you call me? Why didn't you call me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we get um, Mr. Nick to come up quickly? And say something about Pastor Ayo. Hallelujah. Can we clap as it? It encourages people when you clap as they come forward. Thank you. Hallelujah. I, I don't even know how it's coming up. But you know, um, I've been this right for a while now. You know, I used to tell him that we are one of the people that are brought in life. You know, so to speak. You know, um, I remember, you know, then we had that you know, when I met Pastor Nick and all that, you know, but, you know, you know, you know that's a long story, anyway. But Pastor Ayo, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, for me, I think one of the things that are just amazing is, is <laughs> you know, his commitment, you know, to God and to the things of God. You know, I mean, if you hang around it for a while, it's that, you know, it carries it around. You know, you might be talking about sports, you might be talking about different things, but somewhere, you know, it's just, you know, it's like getting close to it, like, you know, getting close to the amount. I don't know how to put it. You know, you just still feel, you know, even though you might be doing natural things, you still feel the presence of God in what you are doing. And, you know, you talk to Him. It's I like, you know, I like what Tennis actually said. You know, he, he, he gives you a long group, a long group, like she said. But, you know, he's very patient. You know, he just, he can listen to you and, like, okay, even though, in, I don't know if he ever gets angry, but I'm sure he does, you know, but it's just hard to, 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 to deal with it and just calm you down and just, like, Okay, what is it? Okay, this is what I think. And you know, and it comes with that like, okay, you're right, actually. You know, I didn't look at it that way. You know, but it's for me it's just it's been a transformation. I knew him when he was just you know, a schoolboy, you know, but now this is many years time and you can see the progression in his life. And you know, it just it's so awesome, you know, some of these things, twenty years from now they're talking about it, but you know, Twenty years ago or fifty years ago, when you look at people, you never know where God is taking them. But then you can see the journey in you know, how they progress through life. And I just want to say you've been you know an inspiration to us. You know, you know that God is taking to places, but your life has been something that I've looked at. And in my prayer place that when I pray, you know, I remember you and my heart, you know, goes out that you know, these are people that their heart is for God. And you know, for me it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenge. And I just want to say, you know, we appreciate you very much. You know, and I appreciate you, you know, you've given us very sound advice which you know has, has made influence in our lives you know we are grateful to you and we thank God for life can we get to please quickly one minute thank you one question why is my one minute and not two minutes I wrote some things down and I'm very I'm gonna be very quick um Four things that I can say about Pastor Raya, which is he has a certain calmness um, around him. And I'm very, um, I'm very proud of. He is a very knowledgeable, very intelligent man um, about things that he's very passionate about, which is one of the things that are in his, his ministry. He is definitely an anointed man of God. Some of the things I've learned in the Bible was because when he was a teacher um, uh, during the KTI and during home church, I learned a lot from him. But most importantly, most importantly, 
He is my friend. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay. So me, we, I'm having lots of eyes. 30 seconds for two people. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. This is the favorite part. I'm sure this is the part that Pastor Ryan really wants to hear. Hallelujah. Let us welcome the one, the only, the amazing, the magnificent, the beautiful, the gorgeous Minister DK. Come on! The wife of the bishop, the minister to the minister. <laughs> Praise God. Happy birthday, Pastor Ryan. What can I say? I've said it all. Okay, so happy birthday to an amazing man. If I were not a woman of faith, I could sleep and know that the family is okay. You know, just take a break and say, Ah, prayer is sorted. <laughs> Everything is sorted. Um, what, what else? Is a very um, thank you for all your support. Where the home is concerned, and that is you change your job. That's what I knew what you to do. <laughs> you know, but thank you for being there. Thank you for being a man of faith, and for being first my pastor before my friend. <laughs> you know, before. Uh, giving yourself the gifts of giving, allowing the expression of the gifts of God where your life is concerned, not only in ministry but even in the home as well. So I'm joining everyone and I'm saying happy birthday. May this year be your best ever. Aww. <laughs> okay. Let us welcome to the stage Pastor Emmy. To pray and we will present the gift. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, nobody stopped appreciating Pastor Ryan this morning. Uh, we can form a queue right after service, and one by one, we can tell him how much you love us. No, seriously, I mean it. You know, a lot of times we appreciate people from afar, and we never get an opportunity to tell them how much we love them and how much they mean to us. Hallelujah. Of course, these words are not the reward. Are you with me? His reward is in heaven, is that right? And if you listen to the words of the song that Tyler read out and, and the chorus she sang, there is a reward that is waiting for us in heaven. And uh, sometimes you might never get anyone to say anything about uh, how much of a difference you have made in their life, but all will be revealed when we make it to heaven. Hallelujah. Come on, let me tell you about say when. Oh, come on, let me tell you about say when. Hallelujah. What if we make it when we make it? Amen. You know, uh, I saw this thing on Facebook. Somebody said, you know, it was not grace that saved Noah, it was obedience. And I said, oh, poor Noah. He could have obeyed all he wanted. If not for grace, we would not have been the one to make it to the earth. Hallelujah. If not for grace. They are not separate, amen. They are one and the same. Hallelujah. It is because of grace that Noah could obey. Hallelujah. All right, so we're going to celebrate Pastor Ryan. Pastor Ryan, please, can you come forward? Let's pray for him. Hallelujah. You know, uh, Brother Nicholas was giving you some word of knowledge that he already knows about how he went to a particular university college and uh, we were doing a campaign. Kingswood was being introduced to that university college. And one of the people that we met and invited to the uh, we're doing what we're school of ministry was Minister Nike. And uh, when Pastor Ryan finished pastoring, he groomed Minister Nike to take over as the pastor, but also to put her on the path, <laughs> hallelujah, of becoming his wife. You know, after he had groomed her for the ministry, he realized that I've done such a great job. 
a criminal for the ministry that I should not let her go. Hallelujah. So it's not a criminal for the other ministry. Can I get a name then? Hallelujah. This is to be there's a reward in service. Amen. There's a reward in service. You know, when you get deep in service, God will send you things that you are not even expecting. Hallelujah. So we thank God for his life. We've worked together for a long time. I'm sure that God will still give us even more opportunities to you know, redeem the ministry, outside the ministry to do great works. Hallelujah. Praise God for heaven. In the past, please, can you join me? Let's pray for everybody. Can you rest off? Let's stretch with our hands. your hands. Towards him and let's pray for him this morning. We pray for a fresh unction. People are talking about how anointed he is. We pray for a fresh release of grace and power over his life, over his ministry. That he will step into a greater anointing. Hallelujah. Greater utterance. Greater manifestation of the gifts of the spirit and the power of God. Come on, lay your hands and just release grace. The power of God is so strong in this place. Father, we stand in agreement with you. That the divine assignment that you have made for him to do. Where this next year is concerned, we declare that not one people that are silent will be left undone. We declare a release of fresh grace, fresh power to fulfill that divine assignment. We declare that nothing shall be missing or broken or lacking in your life. Everything that concerns you will work together for your good because you love God and because you are called according to his purpose. We say, walk in peace in your anointing. Fulfill your ministry. Impact your world. Let your generation be turned to God because of you. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory for this time. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Alright, I need somebody to help me. There's a grey envelope in the last two and then that uh, red back by the side. Hallelujah. Alright? So the church would like to honor you today, and I personally am honoring you. So this is from the church, all right? It's a card for you to go and enjoy yourself. It's a shopping spree of what, 250 pounds, please. Go and enjoy yourself. I'm sure Minister Nika will help you as she's been helping you all these years. Hallelujah. And this is personally for me to say I appreciate you. I appreciate the call of God in your life, and I thank you for all the support that you provided to me. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, Pastor Ryan was reminding me that today, exactly today, marks one year that the pastors and ministers were ordained. Hallelujah. Can you give God a great shout? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I thank God for every work that they've done over the year. They've been absolutely great. I mean, we've seen God move the church in leaps and bounds since we've taken over. Hallelujah. I would believe that in 2016, you know, the results that we're going to see are things that maybe we don't, we do not even imagine. Hallelujah. If you believe that, shout amen. Glory to God. All right, we'll take some pictures and then we'll give Pastor Ryan the mic to say a few words and I will close the service. Amen. All right, so please bring down your phone. Tell the people that want to say a, a nice thing about Pastor Ryan. Please bring down your phone. Please say, look at where are you? Lord, I did this come. Come and join us. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Pastor's ministers, please let's go to the cake. Amen. Sister Sharon, can you do us the honors? You did the honors the last time. Come and help us again, amen. Glory to God. Oh, ah, look at me standing with the cake. Where are the celebrants? Hallelujah. All right, we might need a bit more space, amen. Oh. Maybe we should move it. Maybe it's easier to move this. Okay, so we have to be quite special about how we hold this. Yeah, let's move this around. So we just want to take take a picture with the cake in celebration of this great uh, minister with us this morning. Amen. Alright. Okay. We're all standing close. Pastor Kuni, please join us. Stay please. Hallelujah. Alright, shall we take this cake? I said, can we take the cake? Can we take a picture? All right, thank you. All right, who is helping us? Okay, are we ready? Are we cutting the cake now? Okay, we're going to say, we're going to spell Raya, so we're going to start. If I say, 
R A Y Y O Pastor Ryan. Hallelujah. The official photographer needs one more second. Hallelujah. I say thank you. <laughs> um, thank you for. Uh, I'm, I'm lost for words. <laughs> thank you for for showing me your love. Thank you for the words, the support, and um, that's why I thank you for allowing my who I am find expression. Uh, I, I thank God for King's Road Ministries International for allowing my gift find expression, and um, I also thank you. <laughs> of allowing my gift and expression. Um, I pray that as you have honored me, you will be honored. Amen. And um, as you have honored the gift of God inside of me, that that gift inside of you will find so much expression that you will not only get the honor of men but you will get the reward of God Amen. in the name of Jesus Amen Father thank you thank you Pastor Emi I am really grateful Glory thank you very much Glory to God Hallelujah we just put our hands together for Pastor Emi Amen Glory to God